Hey guys, it's Eric from Lacrosse Lab. Today I want to go through our man down rotations. In this video we'll cover the three on two, the four on three, and the five on four. I'll hold off on going through all of our six on five man down rotations for another video. But to get right into it, we'll create our first play and cover this three on two. All right, so for this first diagram, as I'm adding my offensive players in the triangle, uh, I, I want to call out that we're not really going to consider where the goal is because uh, that could adjust how our defensemen uh, approach the ball. Um, so now that I've got my players added, first we'll go through our player assignments. So in all man down situations, we want to make sure that we've got the ball identified. We will always have a one-on-one -on -one relationship between the ball and the ball carrier. All right, so we'll add our assignment. Our on-ball man is guarding the ball. Our second defenseman, uh, he's going to be our two slide. And what that means is he's responsible for player two and player three. So no matter which way player one uh, chooses to move the ball from here, player two is ready to step out. Uh, and that would leave player one with, with responsibility for recovering back to the middle. So we'll actually assign two uh, offensive guys to player two uh, before we start rotating the ball around. All right. Now as the ball moves to the bottom right, We'll have our defense rotate through. Player two should extend out onto player three. Player one should re uh, recover back to the middle so that he is ready now to approach either player one or player two. All right, we'll advance the slide. Uh, we'll go through our assignments once more. Again, we've got one guy on ball. And our second guy is our two guy. And this is literally what the defense is saying. They are calling out, I'm ball and I am two. They should be saying it over and over and over again. All right, so we've got our second spot. Again, player two, he is, or excuse me, player one, uh, who is now our two guy, is responsible for both player one and player two. So no matter which way player three chooses to rotate the ball, either up to player one, uh, our defensive first player is ready to rotate up or down to player two. So he's in a good spot either way. So if we now rotate this around once more, we'll have our defense adjust. We'll have player two recover back to the middle and we'll add another frame. And I'll just go through and quickly add these assignments. We've got on ball and our two guy who is responsible for offensive players one and three. And we will move the ball up once more so that player one is recovering back to the middle and player two is, is rotating back up. All right, so that, that was, this is kind of a quick diagram on defending the, the three on two scenario. Um, we'll, we'll kind of play through and, and watch this rotation in action. I think it's an important thing for our younger uh, defensemen to, to see that you are not responsible for a single player. We need two guys to be covering uh, three guys. All right, so as we play this through, I'll highlight player one just so that you can see that he's sort of rotating through his, his spots and not actually sticking with our first uh, offensive player. So let me click play and we'll watch him move through. So by the time that the ball gets back up to our original spot, our second defenseman is now picking up ball. Our first player is now splitting two, right? And that's just because we've got one less guy, so we are going to be rotating <coughs> around the horn. All right, so that lays out the three on two. Next, we'll cover the four on three. So we'll add our second play, call it four on three. We'll keep men's lacrosse and we're in the half field scenario. Uh, in this situation, I will actually consider that the goal is in play, all right? That, again, that will change how our defense is going to be approaching the ball. So this situation is going to play out more like a traditional fast break, all right? The first, as I'm dropping my players out, the first thing I want to call out, you'll notice I was pretty conservative with where I dropped player one. So usually what I'm telling my guys is that we want to be setting point probably between 10 and 12 yards. Um, it's really up to the goalie's uh, level of comfort on where we want to be setting point. So um, your defenseman should always be getting a feel from the goalie. Where do you want the point to be set? Um, and from there, we'll, we'll set the point at 10 to 12 yards. And then our second two guys their responsibility is really to discourage this skip pass, right? Back down to this bottom corner. Um, 
if anything breaks a man down situation faster, it's going to be skip passes because that forces the defense into a scramble. And the reason that that scramble happens, right? If if we go through and um, we go through and add our assignments again, we've got one guy. He's on ball. In this situation, we've got two guys that are going to be guarding two guys, but in this case, we'll call them point or on ball, left and right. So left and right, I like slightly upfield from their attackmen. So that if they have to approach, they've got a nice topside angle to force the attackmen back behind the goal, but also upfield so that we can discourage this, this skip pass. All right. Now their assignments, player three is going to be assigned to offensive players two and four. Defensive player two is going to be assigned to offensive players three and four. Um, now, as we move this ball around, one thing I, I want to call out uh, is that number player three, who is our back right defenseman, should be slow playing this skip pass. Uh, the reason for that, again, we really need to discourage getting the ball through player four. But one thing that I see a lot when defensemen start going through the motions is that player three is often quick to leave, and he just goes up to guard our second guy, and it leaves player four wide open on the doorstep. So we got to make sure that we're keeping an eye on, on player three, this back right defenseman, and slow playing uh, this approach up to the point attackman. All right, but we will rotate through. The second thing I want to call out after calling out that player three should be slow playing it, uh, play, excuse me, slow playing the approach up to uh, the point attackman, our former point defenseman, orange player number one, really needs to do a good job of getting back into the hole and taking away this skip pass from player two to player three. Uh, our, the second biggest mistake that I generally see with younger defensemen is that point guy is he'll set point and he'll stop ball and he'll do a great job and then he doesn't move. He really needs to get on his horse and cover up that second uh, or excuse me cover up that pipe uh, so that we force the offense into keeping the ball around the horn where we are nice and organized. All right, so we'll go ahead and advance the slide. We'll make our assignments. You'll see that player one landed in this spot where uh, if we try to skip it, player one should be able to get a stick on it. Uh, so we'll keep the offense forcing, um, moving the ball around the horn, and we'll continue adding our defensive assignments. We've got player three is on ball now. Player two is on the right where he was previously back left. And our firmer point guy is now back left. All right, so we've got all of our guys covered and accounted for. Um, and now we will rotate through again. I want player two to take a nice topside angle. So we're forcing player four underneath the goal. We do not want him to get over the top of us. Player three should be recovering back to that middle. Again, keeping an eye on that skip pass from player four to player one. And then our back left guy, player one, he'll probably just be kind of rotating around a little bit since we've got the goalie, bishop, and player one kind of keeping an eye on, on this through pass. Now, just for the sake of this demonstration, since I want you guys to see what this rotation looks like, I'm going to continue through and advance the ball back up to our original point guy. Uh, so I'll quickly go through and add these assignments. Player three is back left. Player one is back right. Make our assignments. Guarding one and two. Player one. Guarding player three. And player one. And we will move the ball back to the bottom left. We'll have our defense rotate to recover to on ball again with the top side angle and player three again he's in a pretty decent spot right there but now player one is back on ball after originally starting at the point sign All right, and then we will move the ball back up to our original point guy so we can watch our guys rotate. Player one should be 
coming back in. Player three is now our new point guy, but we still want to be pretty disciplined and not overextend. Player two might want to step back a little bit more into the middle and upfield. I'll just do this last round of assignments. All right, so we've gone through a full rotation. Again, just to keep an eye on how our defensemen are rotating, I'll play this back once more with an eye on player one. We'll click play. And you can see that he's going to rotate from originally starting on ball, and he's going to finish up in the bottom left scenario. But in all cases, we've got this skip pass, excuse me, skip pass covered, and we're always organized. We've always got two guys ready to rotate to uh, the remaining three guys. And we're also accounting for the guy on ball. We should always be hearing in a four on three situation, ball left and right. All right. Now, rather than building out a full five on four scenario, I've got something pre-built here that we can just talk through quickly. I got to save my play so we can come back to it and we'll hop over to five on four. All right. So in this situation, we're going to take a couple of, um, concepts from both the three on two and the man down situation. So our defensive calls in a five on four is that we always need someone on ball. We always need someone that's left. We always need someone that's right. And we always need someone that's covering two. We've got better odds in a five on four than we would have in a four on three or, or even a three on two. Um, just the ratio uh, gives us uh, better, better odds here. All right. So first thing I'll call out, we've got player number one assigned two ball. In this case, our left and right players are also only in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of situation. Only the, the defenseman that's furthest away from the ball, in this case player three, is responsible for, for guarding players three and four. <clears throat> so if the offense plans to skip the ball to either th player three or player four, we've got player three, who's guarding two, uh, quickly able to step out. And that gives us better coverage. Um, while we'll have a brief scramble, by having one guy pick up ball, it'll give our, our remaining three defensemen a split second to recover uh, rather than being completely disorganized. So we always need to be hearing ball left, right, and two. Now as the ball rotates around, you'll notice that the guy furthest away from the ball is constantly changing. So in this case, player four has got two. And we'll keep rotating around the horn. Now that the ball's at X, Player two is responsible for this skip pass up to the top corners. Um, and we'll ultimately continue back up through uh, our starting point where you'll notice that our second defenseman is now on ball. Um, in a five on four scenario, we are probably able to be a little bit more uh, aggressive with how far we're extending. I still want to keep play within the restraining line. Um, but it doesn't need to be as tight as 12 yards. We can, we can bother our attackmen a little bit more and get on their hands. Uh, but again, just so that you guys see how this rotation plays out once more, we'll highlight player one and we'll go through step by step where we see him now uh, guarding two. Now he's back or back right. Now he's back on ball, but he's in the left wing position uh, before finishing up as the man on left of the ball. All right, so in all three, uh, scenarios, the three on two, the four on three, and the five on four. I want to call out how this rotation works. We're not going to be playing many one-on-one -on -one situations, but we should always have someone calling out ball, left, right, and two. So I hope this video was helpful. Please share it with your younger players uh, and help them understand how these uh, man-down situations work. Uh, thanks for checking in.